Takuma Kutsu, an ugly loner high schooler, accepts his lonely lot in life, surrounded by his studies, until God Odin chooses him to save the world by being the lover of his nine daughters, the Valkyries. Despite his utter horror, however, he agrees to let the sisters stay at his big yet empty house to help them in their war against demons. With nine beautiful women sharing his roof, will Takuma manage to prevail over his fear of society and become someone worthy of saving the world? After class, Takuma exited the school premises without interacting with anyone else. Despite him minding his own business, awful and wary stares are aimed in his direction. He soon found that even civilians were afraid of him. Even in the past, people still treated him differently because of how he looked. This house is the only place he could truly be alone and be himself. Or so he thought. He opens the door to his home, he's greeted with a rather obscene sight. Natsuki, Itsuyo, and Mutsumi were partly undressed when Takuma waltz in. Why do you think all three popular girls were in his home, huh? Takuma decided to leave the girls alone, but as he was about to turn his back, Natsuki threw an object at him and gave him an earful's amount of a lecture. All Takuma wanted was to be alone as soon as possible, but every move he made seemed to put him in an awkward position with the three women. Panicking, he ran away from Natsuki, Itsuyo, and Mitsumi to find solace in his room. Turns out, all three popular girls lived in the same house as Takuma, along with six other women. In Takuma's words, This house is being controlled by nine women! All nine women joined Takuma for dinner, and the only thing that he could think about was how he would politely tell them to leave his house. Finding that he could never say the words in his head, Takuma just ate his dinner without uttering his request. Later on, Takuma found himself in another awkward situation as Natsuki joined him for a study session. Poor guy, all he ever wanted was to study in peace. Despite Natsuki wanting to study with him, Takuma would rather still prefer that he study alone. Their study session was interrupted by Fataba as she asked for both Natsuki and Takuma to run an errand of buying toilet paper. Before Fataba left, she made a request that both must hold hands upon shopping together. At the park, a gust of wind blew from the night sky but this wind had a rather demonic feel to it. A magical vortex suddenly opened itself and a towering demon manifested from it to wreak havoc in the city. Everyone made a run to the exit, but Natsuki and Takuma remained in their place. A magical barrier was formed and the demon began its chaos. Both Takuma and Natsuki realized that this demon wouldn't be easy to defeat. Briefly, Takuma considered making a run for it as well. Well, running is justified. It seems like the most rational human thing to do. When debris was thrown in their direction, his thoughts quickly faded away and his body moved on its own to protect Natsuki from the impact. As Natsuki saw this, she realized that there was only one way to defeat the demon. Natsuki undressed herself and brought Takuma's hands to her chest. She left his hands lingered there for a span of time, and this made Takuma all the more flustered and confused. Finally, after Natsuki shied away from fluster as well, her Valkyrie instincts are activated. Natsuki's powers manifested quickly, and she raised her level enough to conquer the demon before them. Fataba, proud of Natsuki's triumph, called Ichika to finally show herself. Ichika retorts that if it took Takuma 320 seconds to raise Natsuki's level and defeat the demon, then he wasn't worth acknowledging as the lover of all nine Valkyries. As the night faded away, Takuma began to remember a flashback of an encounter in the past. A bright light manifested itself in front of him. A voice emanated from this light telling him that he would be tasked to protect Midgard, the human realm, from an upcoming apocalypse. To do this, Odin, the voice and light before Takuma, declared that he would bestow Takuma with a sword to vanquish the demonic foes. These swords took the form of the Nine Valkyries. Odin then tasked Takuma to become the Valkyrie's lover, for as long as a Valkyrie is in love, the more their power would grow. Hand in hand, the Valkyries would rid Midgard of the demons. Following the recent demon attack, Natsuki reminded Takuma of his promise to his late mother. She then mentioned that if the demons kept coming, there wouldn't be a world left for him to fulfill his promise. She then struck a deal with Takuma to work together to fulfill both of their promises, for the Valkyries to protect the world and for Takuma to grow up to be a respectable person in this world. The next day, the students gathered at the school grounds to greet all three popular women. Their mood then changed when they noticed Takuma, still being an object of their fear, walking around with a sort of odd aura. Takuma, on the other hand, paid no mind to the other students. Instead, he shifted his attention to the announcement of the semester exam results. Matsumi and Natsuki viewed the exam results and were shocked to see Itsuyo score first place on the exams. Natsuki felt rather discouraged as she did not do quite well during the exams. 
Her discouragement quickly dissipated when she and Mutsumi realized that Takuma's academic ranking was in last place among all others. Both girls confronted Takuma about the situation, and he told them that it was impossible for him to focus on the exam when other people were around. Seeing other students around him made him feel all sorts of anxiety while taking the exam. PA announcement echoed around the school grounds for Takuma to proceed to the AV room. Upon his entry, Itsuyo threw chains in his direction and demanded that they go on a date for her to finally level up as a Valkyrie. In all truth, Itsuyo couldn't care less for Takuma. It was only because of the Valkyrie's father, Odin, holding the highest rank and power, that she would love Takuma as their father's chosen lover for them. Her goal was simple. She declared to herself that she would use Takuma as their lover to level up and become the strongest Valkyrie. Only then would she gain her father's approval. Itsuyo has a daddy complex. For real. Itsuyo began all sorts of schemes to raise her level. Her attempts included sharing a meal with Takuma, massaging him, gazing into his eyes, and even linking their arms. But all of her attempts failed. This angered Itsuyo. And at this rate, she would never increase her level. In the locker room, Itsuyo and Natsuki conversed with each other. Natsuki reminded Itsuyo that there was still plenty of time until the next battle so there was no need for her to rush. Finding her comment rather sharp, Itsuyo reminded Natsuki that those were bold words coming from her who forced a stimulation during her own battle at the park. With that, Itsuyo left the locker room in a fit of rage. Outside, Itsuyo noticed an alarming aura. Upon turning her back, she saw a massive cloud demon drifting along the school premises. Takuma and the rest of the Valkyries heightened their senses at the sight of the demon. But didn't Natsuki say that the next battle wouldn't be so soon? Their father's oracle was wrong once again. Takuma and all three Valkyries at the school gather behind a building to plan their attack. A barrier deployed to contain the demon while all four planned. Itsuyo admitted that her current level, she can't vanquish the demon alone. Hearing this, Natsuki suggested that Itsuyo raise her level and vanquish the demon. On Natsuki would lure and distract it while Itsuyo levels up. To activate Natsuki's Battle Valkyrie mode, she told Takuma to close his eyes as she kissed him. Upon doing so, she geared up and went to lure the demon. Itsuyo then took Takuma so she could raise her own level and help Natsuki. Itsuyo has always been adamant at wanting to fulfill her father's wishes. But despite her best efforts to increase her level, she still found herself unable to commit to such obscene tactics just to improve. Unknowingly, she slumped in self-pity. Seeing Itsuyo so sad and almost tearful, Takuma motioned to comfort her with a gentle hand on her head. Itsuyo appreciated his effort to comfort her, and as a means of thanks in increasing her level, she returned the favor with a kiss on Takuma's cheek. The kiss they shared, albeit wholesome, was enough to increase Itsuyo's level and activate her battle Valkyrie mode. Atsuki, on the other hand, had already been cornered by the demon. Just in time, Itsuyo came to the battlefield and engulfed the demon in her power. Itsuyo was able to seal the demon's power with her chains thus fully incapacitating the enemy. However, Itsuyo called out to Natsuki for her to deliver the finishing blow. It's amazing how Itsuyo wasn't selfish like how her inner thoughts always portrayed her to be. After the defeat of the demon, all four of them immediately rejoined with the members of the student council. Itsuyo used the pretense of getting lost as to why it took her so long to return. As they all walked together, Toro Inukai, the secretary of the student council, led the way. His appearance, although innocent and good, was ultimately the opposite. In his inner monologue, he talked about the weak state of the Valkyries and Einenhar. He then explicitly thought to devour whatever power is there before it's even presented to him. His true face is then revealed as his back is turned, and it turns out that he's an enemy to all. Could he be a demon in disguise? Matsumi has a talent for advertisement and media, in the building of her recent shoots venue, Mitsumi remarked that she has been so busy with shoots lately, she hardly had any time to even see Takuma these past few days. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, Mitsumi's sister Valkyries deal with a demon that summoned itself following their father's oracle. Bataba and Itsuyo stand by as Takuma and Natsuki deal with a rampaging demon. The next day, Mitsumi and Takuma go on a date together as planned by Itsuyo and Futaba. Mitsumi wanted to take great caution not to be recognized as an idol so that their date doesn't fail. At the neighboring table, Yamada, a student at Hokyo Academy, bragged to his friends about being in contact with the upcoming next big idol, Mitsumi. As the conversation between Yamada and his friends went further along, Yamada mentioned that he was always bullied by a guy named Takuma. The friend group talked awfully about Takuma, not knowing that he and Mitsumi were seated on the table opposite them. As Yamada made another remark, he turned his head and noticed Takuma. 
Out of fear, he exits through the window, apologizing profusely to Takuma for talking about him. To get a breather from the tense air back at the cafe, Mitsumi and Takuma headed to the bookstore to browse exam books. There, both of them shared their interests and past experiences. Mitsumi shared her experience of being attacked by a demon before, and how back then, Itsuyo used to cling to Natsuki all the time. Her sharings then wandered to the time of when she became an idol, even though it was against her will. She noted that even though her circumstances were like that in the past, She's very thankful for becoming an idol now. Takuma listened to Mitsumi the entire time, but he couldn't help but remember his own past experiences as well. His thoughts wandered to a memory of him crying as his mother lay on her deathbed. As the two finished browsing the bookstore, they made their way to the mall's general area where Mitsumi tried her hardest to convince Takuma to take a break from studying. Takuma retorted that he would rather not be in the mall right now. It's probably because of his social anxiety and phobia of interactions. Perhaps crowded places like the mall wouldn't really put him at ease. Unbeknownst to the both of them, Toru Inokai was actually watching their interaction from a distance. He eyed Mitsumi and expressed his desire to devour her. Initially, Toru had wanted to come up and talk to both of them to ruin their date. However, he resorted to a rather devious plan instead. From Toru's hand, he produced an Akuma, and it was known for its love of gossip and riling everyone around to cause commotion. The Akuma, as loud as ever, had announced to the entire mall area that Mitsumi was in the area. This resulted in people stampeding over to Mitsumi's direction. Not wanting to leave Mitsumi alone in the commotion, Takuma took Mitsumi's hand and made a run for it. Both Mitsumi and Takuma found a nearby storage room to hide themselves in, but alas! The Akuma still managed to tackle them. It was like one of those real-life creeps stalking celebrities around. The little Akuma alerted the band of boys obsessed with Mitsumi, and together they made their way to the storage room. There was no escape for Mitsumi and Takuma this time. In the little storage room, they cramped themselves in a narrow locker to hide from the intruders breaking in. With their bodies pressed together, Mitsumi realized that this situation excited her. All sorts of stimulating thoughts entered the Valkyrie's mind in the hopes of raising her level. As the men drew closer to finding their location, Mitsumi finally asked Takuma to unbutton his shirt. She really needed to increase her level right then and there to save both of them. Mitsumi began to suck on Takuma's skin to excite herself in the interaction. Takuma blushed profusely, but he allowed Mitsumi to continue, knowing full well this was the only way to activate her battle Valkyrie. The men noticed movement from the lockers and quickly deduced that their idol must have been hiding in there. Honestly, these men are creepy. Don't they know it's illegal to stalk people? As the men approached the locker, Mitsumi gave in to kissing certain areas where a level increase is very likely. With only 10 seconds left till the intruders find their location, Mitsumi tried her hardest to stimulate a level increase by passionately kissing Takuma's nape. As the men moved closer to the locker, a magical spear targeted the Akuma directly. Mitsumi's Valkyrie mode has finally been activated. Confused, the men inspected the spear but found no interest. Again, they motioned towards the locker, but a strong gust of wind blew from within and the men found themselves staring at an empty locker. Together with Takuma, Mitsumi made their escape towards the sky. Her winged Valkyrie level has increased greatly and this was all possible thanks to Takuma. As both floated in the expanse of space, Takuma realized that the sunset was as beautiful as the one he and his mother watched years ago. With a calm smile on his face, Takuma enjoyed each second of the setting sun, savoring the moment as it passed. In the end, Takuma and Mitsumi created fun memories together, so one could say their date was a success. Meanwhile, in a dark alley, Ichika received a phone call of gratitude. Turns out, as everyone busied themselves on dating and increasing their level, Ichika had been supporting and protecting all of them from the sidelines. In a way, she acted like a bodyguard for all her sisters. Ichika, with a cold tone as ever, warns her sister that the enemy is closing in. They best take care from here and onwards. Today was Takuma's mock national exam. The sisters gathered at the kitchen and common area just in time for Takuma to get back. As Takuma entered, an air of dejection and discouragement filled the room. What on earth happened? Takuma told the Valkyries about the crowded testing site and that his phobia of humans and socializing got the best of him. He totally admitted to flunking the exam. To lift everyone's spirits up, a game of tag is suggested to everyone. Takuma, being a studious person, knew that there was no stopping these sisters when they had set their mind to something. He agreed to play tag with them just this once. No, oh, Takuma, don't think this is a regular game of tag you're getting yourself into. Upon hearing everyone's confirmation, everyone in the room began to draw lots to determine the it. In the end, it was Futaba who was declared as it. 
but for some reason, everyone had fearful looks on their faces. Could Futaba actually be more ruthless than we originally thought? With a final glance, Futaba looked at everyone and announced the game mechanics. The rules were simple. A person loses once their panties were stolen. Hearing this, Takuma has a look of pure shock. Why were panties involved now? Hearing this, everyone retreated to their separate teams and planned strategies before the game commenced. Takuma is indeed confused about the entire game, and he is lost in thought that he absentmindedly opened a room door without knocking. Upon opening the door, he's greeted to the sight of a barely dressed Itsuyo and Misa. Itsuyo pointed out that even if they were freeloaders at his home, they should at least be treated with respect. Takuma quickly apologized, clarifying that this was all a misunderstanding. Misa, on the other hand, explained to Takuma how she planned to defeat Futaba at Tag. As a level 1 Valkyrie, Futaba possessed more combat skills than all of them, which is why it's hard to win against her. As they talked about their plans, the room wall erupted into debris. This sent Takuma stumbling over Misa and Itsuyo in a very awkward position, when Takuma's hand was over Itsuya's chest and the other on Misa's bum. Takuma quickly apologized once more for the mistake. Poor Takuma. He's always caught in an awkward situation, isn't he? As Vataba and Itsuyo battled, Misa sent Takuma flying to save him from their combat. In the end, Itsuyo and Misa lost to Futaba. Meanwhile, Takuma is in yet again another awkward situation as he's landed directly on top of Yakumo. Yakumo gave Takuma a sharp remark, leaving him with a grim face the entire time. Together with Natsuki and the others, they all plan their offense-defense approach against Futaba. Natsuki mentioned that Futaba has the ability to summon one wall from Valhalla, which made her a tricky opponent. Before they could wrap up planning, Futaba arrived at the scene and executed exactly what Natsuki and the others expected. Even though they anticipated her movements, Futaba's sheer strength was still enough to overwhelm them all. Takuma, in an attempt to save himself, made his way to the storehouse to take cover. Except when he tried to open the door, it wouldn't budge at all. At this time, Takuma has finally decided to resign himself to the game. There was no point in trying to hide now. This is so funny because he's totally given up. He's just going along with whatever happens now, I guess. Just nearby, Natsuki is the last woman standing against Futaba. She and Takuma braced themselves for Futaba's final blow, but it didn't happen. Instead, Futaba's expression softened as she handed Takuma a gift. Confused, Takuma looks at everyone with a soft gaze. Turns out, this whole game was for Takuma to experience a relief from his studies, a chance for him to have fun. This gift was another way of thanking him for always taking care of them and also encouraging him in his academic pursuits as well. The following day, an inspection on school festival preparations is made. Natsuki was asked for her classmates to model the maid outfit for their maid cafe concept, to which she agreed. Natsuki's maid dress looks so good on her. <laughs> Toru, the secretary of the council, came to inspect Natsuki's preparations. He praised Natsuki's maid dress, as he should, and this made Natsuki happy. Inwardly, Toru was disgusted at the fact that he had to play all goody-goody towards his enemies. Toru instigated a demonstration of the maid cafe and pitched Takuma to be the one being served and tended to. The demonstration didn't go as smoothly as planned since lots of things went wrong. Taking this opportunity to start a commotion, Toru releases demons inside the classroom to test the limits of a Valkyrie in human form. Natsuki, quick as ever, immediately summoned her blade to rid the demons with the help of Takuma. Even though they were successful, Natsuki still showed a vulnerability, one that Toru swiftly took note of. He's as devious as ever, that Toru. After a tiring day, Natsuki and Takuma walked home together as the sunset draped the afternoon sky. Their conversations led to Takuma explicitly mentioning that he found Natsuki cute. This flustered Natsuki as she went for a sprint to avoid her fluster from being found out. Today is finally the day of the Hakuyo School Festival. Everyone seemed to be excited for the events of the day. Ikumo decided to visit and support the school festival, but it's almost as if everyone is afraid of her escort. Takuma. Everyone was shooting Takuma dagger glares at this point. How could he be with another pretty girl? They all deduced that this was probably a kidnapping. Later on, Yakumo and Takuma headed to Natsuki's class to enjoy their maid cafe concept. As Yakumo and Takuma are served their drink, Yakumo dipped her hand into the drink and made Takuma suck on her hand. Whoa, Yakumo! This is a public place! What on earth are you doing? Seeing this, Natsuki is left speechless in the background. When Takuma motioned to readjust his posture, he ended up pulling the table covers and spilling the drink all over Yakumo. 
In response to this, Yakumo teased Takuma and she pulled off her clothes in the process. Itsuki headed over to their table and berated Yakumo profusely. Unknowingly, the rest of the Valkyries arrived and made their way to Takuma and Yakumo's table as well. Seeing so many beautiful women surrounding Takuma was enough for all the boys in the class to get even more angry at him. Takuma and the rest of the Valkyries gathered together in one spot. Someone brought up the night dance festival concept where a man and woman pair up to dance. Everyone else suggested that Natsuki and Takuma go together. But just as Natsuki was about to agree, Takuma interjects that perhaps he should pair up with someone else. This comment hurt Natsuki, and she motions to leave in the pretense of working. While everyone else found time to enjoy, Ichika made her way to the festival to survey around and protect her sisters. Butaba noted that the festival was a chance for everyone to raise their level all at once, so unpredictable circumstances could arise at any moment. Later on, Takuma, Misa, and Karuri headed out to the haunted house. Karuri and Takuma seemed to be too frightened at the haunted house, so Misa had to hold on to both their hands as they walked further along. To settle an old score with Takuma, the boy on duty at the haunted house made it more troublesome and terrifying for the group. Karuri, unable to stand the scares, took off on a sprint to hide. Oh, poor girl. She's just a child, after all. Meanwhile, Takuma finds himself in an awkward situation when the boy on duty released a live catfish that jumped onto Misa's clothing. Trying to help Misa, Takuma tried to catch the catfish as it wiggled around. However, observers seeing the scene misunderstood the situation as it seemed like Takuma was groping and taking advantage of Misa. Again! He's innocently gotten caught in something he didn't mean to do. As Takuma went to catch his breath by the school fountain, Toru approached him and made small talk. From a distance, Itsuyo and the rest of the Valkyries panicked as they could sense a demonic aura all around. Upon approaching Toru and Takuma, Toru finally revealed his true colors to all the Valkyries and summoned a great demon. Along with that, Toru also summoned human-possessing demons to possess the entire school populace. With an evil grin, Toru eyed the Valkyries as he impaled Tsukuma's torso, leaving him to bleed all over. My god! Takuma doesn't deserve any of this at all! A barrier is deployed around the premises and the Valkyries split teams to divide the fighting load. Itsuyo, Karori, Misa, Mitsumi, and Yakumo team up together to vanquish the great demon that rampaged around. Ichika and Natsuki formed a duo as both tried their hardest to battle the human-possessing demons. Ichika remarked that she hated having to deal with the consequences of Takuma's failure as Odin's chosen one. It's not like Takuma wanted to involve himself in the first place, though. In an isolated classroom away from all the commotion, Toru took on his demon form and dined with Takuma as he sat bound and held hostage. Toru marveled at the chaos he plunged the entire school into. In an attempt to battle the great demon, Itsuyo and the rest of the Valkyries are overwhelmed by its might. They are left vulnerable to its attacks as all of them are still in human form. Takuma hated being put in situations of weakness. He hated it more than anything. Remembering the interactions with Neitsuki, he felt a renewed strength course through him as he tried to fight Toru. His attempts were unsuccessful, but it was just enough time to buy for Fatuba to enter the scene and confront Toru. Futaba looks innocent, but really, her power is unmatched next to Ichika. Futaba, in all her calm demeanor, exchanged a few words with Toru, or now in his demon form, Garm. In an attempt to buy time for Takuma to escape, Futaba took an opportunity to ignore Garm just to tell Takuma to escape. This irritated Garm immensely as he saw it as an underestimation of his power. Seeing Takuma escape, Otaba feels a sense of relief for a moment, but is quickly shattered when Garm pulls a trick up his sleeve. Garm had already anticipated that they would try to prioritize Takuma's escape among all others, which is why he resorted to the lowest means possible. He had planted a demonic parasite in Takuma, impaling him from his internals. Futaba watched in horror as the parasite repeatedly hacked through Takuma's body ultimately slicing him into two. No, 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 stop, uh, stop, 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 stop. Can't possibly die yet. Before we get further into the video, my filthy degenerates, do you love hot anime girls? Do you love RPGs? Did you at one point in your life wish you could have both? Well, you're in luck as I have got just the right thing for you. Introducing Arc Recode. It's a new apocalyptic strategy mobile adult RPG developed by Eero Labs. Eero Labs being the geniuses behind other well-known adult mobile games such as Cherry Tail. Offering rich nurture and collection gameplay, the game is set in the aftermath of a disaster involving humans trying to combat an apostle, hellbent on destroying Earth with arcs using astrogen powers. So become the human who leads the squad of charming and capable girls. Find a way to save the world and build a deep bond with them. 
Compose your own strategy through attributes, classes, and hundreds of skill combinations. Connect with the girl you admire and raise their abilities to earn the character-specific CG. Don't forget that there are hundreds of beautiful girls with unique personalities and appearances, each designed by top illustrators, just waiting for you. So, build your own exclusive harem of these beautiful girls and save the world together with them! I also know for a fact that half our audience is still not even legal enough to drink. So before you horny mofos click the download link below, the game is strictly 18 plus due to the contents. So wait a while as the game's not going anywhere soon, because even though it may not be available on Play Store and App Store due to its risque nature, it is available for download on the Eero Lab website, link given below. What's more is that if you download the game before, you can use this code here to win exclusive prizes and more waifus. So, what are you waiting for? Download Arc Recode now! In his last moments, all Takuma could think of was the Valkyries he had lived with for the past few months. He held onto their memory as he desperately pleaded not to die. In this moment, a bright light emanated from Takuma, and a tree manifested itself as it healed Takuma's entire being. Garm recognized this as Mischlestein, and he felt utterly insulted that such a lowly human creature would be bestowed such treasure. Futaba held Garm in place as they both fought futilely against each other. Wow, Futaba isn't even an activated battle form, but she's so strong against a high-ranking demon. Takuma ran and fought for his life as he exited into the hallways. His memories of his mother became a guiding light for him to see through his responsibility now. Takuma would help vanquish these demons no matter what. As Takuma fought each demon with raw strength, Ichika finally regarded him as someone who took up the role of a fighter. Although she didn't completely accept him yet, she now recognized him as someone who had unwavering resolve. Amidst all the chaos, Natsuki was the first to spot Takuma as he scurried along the premises. Takuma's goal was simple. It would help the Valkyries level up so that they'd possess enough power to subdue the apocalypse unleashed at the school. To do this, both Natsuki and Takuma retreated to a room, attempting to invoke an enhanced Val love brought by French kissing nude for five whole minutes. The level up tactics really required them to love intimately just for the power. As the two began engaging in level up intimacy, Yakumo used her flute to activate what little power was left in Mutsumi's wings. Mutsumi, with her briefly activated wings, dashed to fly Kururi to safety. Meanwhile, Itsuya is bound by the enemy's grasp. Misa uses her thread to free Itsuyo from the enemy's clutches. Despite the scene getting more intense, Natsuki's body is still cold, making Takuma worry for her. He panicked at the thought when suddenly a magical book manifested itself in Takuma's hands. This immediately warmed Natsuki. Something's wrong. Seems like the process isn't working at all. What might that be? In the battlefield, the great demon Shvaldafari was close to incapacitating all five Valkyries. But just in time, Natsuki appeared in an even more powerful Valkyrie mode. Natsuki's glow is that of a renewed power, enough to conquer strong foes. Her great blades impale the big demon, but the demon's ability to consume anything proves to hinder her combat strategies. While the rest battled the great demon, Futaba continued to fight Garm. Futaba realized that Garm worked directly with the malevolent gods, trying to gather Aether from humans and bring Ragnarok sooner. Garm cannot hold his own against Fataba's attacks, and she's even quick to figure out their plans. Yes, never underestimate Fataba's strength and wit. When Fataba finally moves closer to eliminate Garm, two arrows are shot in her direction. In the short span of the arrows firing, Garm was able to flee from Fataba. As Natsuki delivers the finishing blow to end the great big demon, an unknown boy with dark and gloomy aesthetics shows himself at the rooftop. The boy rescued Garm from Futaba and urged him to go back to their world as he's a failure at his own mission. The fighting came to an end and the barrier dissipated along with the demonic aura. Ichika watched her sisters gather around Takuma as everyone caught a breather from the recent battle. The following day, the beauty contest results are announced and Mitsumi is hailed as the winner. In another regard, Takuma mustered up the courage to overcome the awkwardness with Natsuki and managed to invite her to the dance. Late at night, Takuma walked around the house as he couldn't concentrate on studying. As he passed by a lit room, he noticed that all of the Valkyries were still up. Misa was the first one to break the silence, mentioning that everyone was still sore from the recent fight. They're all taking their time to recuperate and build up strength once more. Oh, perhaps it's sort of like a self-care night for all of them, I guess. Karuri dashed into the room and enthusiastically introduced her new invention, a doctor set. As Fataba arrived, she suggested that they all play a game of doctor, where Takuma would act as the doctor while the rest would be patients. 
Misa quickly declines, but Takuma pleads that they play. The doctor game commences, and Takuma takes on the role of everyone's doctor. Takuma felt as if he caused too much trouble for everyone during the festival, which is why he wanted to do what he can to make everyone feel better, whether it was physically or emotionally. However, Takuma didn't realize that playing the role of doctor would once again put him in an awkward, intimate situation with the Valkyries. As he began to check up Futaba, he was placed in an awkward position as she exposed her bare chest for him to inspect. With Misa, she stripped down to expose her back for a good oil massage. Poor guy, he just can't keep up with everyone's energy. Itsuyo proved to be more bashful than ever as she was required to take a urine test on the spot. Even more challenging, Itsuyo refused to hand over her urine sample out of embarrassment. After Itsuyo, Itsuki was next for a checkup. She reminded Takuma that all of this was pretend, so he better not try anything shameful. As Natsuki got checked, her reactions were all over the place ranging from profuse blushing all the way to physically hitting Takuma. Takuma, your patience and determination for dealing with all of them is truly admirable. Thinking he had the worst taken care of, Takuma didn't realize how much the tables turned when it was time for Yakamoto's turn. In a turn of events, it was Yakamoto who ended up grabbing Takuma's body under the pretense of a checkup. It even reached a point of Yakamoto munching and sucking on his ear. At last, it was Karori's turn. But instead of a checkup, it was almost as if Karori was a therapist reading and assessing Takuma's recent actions. Feeling dejected, Takuma asked what he could be doing wrong. Karori disregarded the question and introduced a super examination mode to her invention. Karori, out of excitement, instantly activated the higher mode without thinking of possible malfunctions. Alas, a malfunction did occur and her doctor set currently worn by Takuma had overheated and exploded ultimately injuring Takuma in the process. Everyone worried about Takuma's injured state, but he reassured them that he was fine, and there was no need to worry. One of the Valkyries found it ironic that a doctor ended up injuring himself. This then caused the mood to lighten up. In the end, all the Valkyries played doctor in trying to nurse Takuma back to health and take care of him. Later that night, Itsuyo prepared a scrumptious dinner for Takuma. However, things didn't go as planned as she unintentionally used so much force in trying to spoon-feed Takuma and it caused him to choke on his food, and left him unable to enjoy Itsuyo's prepared meal. Itsuyo, don't try too hard, you'll screw it up if it doesn't seem natural. At the dinner table, Itsuyo asked Misa to show her an example of an effective date. Misa found the request absurd, and Itsuyo retorts that it was only natural since Misa was a master of gleeful romance back in Asgard. Misa once more made a face expressing an absurd reaction. She then took a moment to remember her life back in Asgard. Before, back when it used to only be Ichika, Futaba, and Misa, Misa would rarely be indulged by her older sisters. It was always them trying to train her in the most experience-rich way possible. And Misa is like how most middle child children are treated. Many years later, when the rest of her sisters came along, Misa found it fulfilling to look after all of them. Misa realized that Itsuyo was eager to level up because of Natsuki's current level. Itsuyo hated how she was so vulnerable during the attack. She never wanted to experience such a susceptible moment of weakness again. Hearing this, Misa sympathized with Itsuyo, and she agreed to her request of showing her an example of a date. The following day, Misa invokes a level-up scheme by spending an hour with Takuma in the laundry room. Misa had all the intention of wanting Itsuyo to learn from her, but it seemed like she was flunking her own plan. Nothing was going as she had hoped it would. First, she accidentally injured Takuma's head, and next she accidentally revealed too much skin. The odds really weren't in her favor today. Unbeknownst to her, Itsuyo had been taking notes of everything. She didn't even bother to recognize a single flaw in Misa's flow of a date. As Misa tried her hardest to maintain her strings and cover up, she was startled by Takuma suddenly appearing so close behind her. Her rattled state made her let go of her strings thus cutting into the fabric of her own clothing and binding her nude physique with Takuma's clothed one. This totally wasn't her plan. Seeing events unfold the way they did, Itsuyo took great care in trying to give them privacy. After clarifying that all of this was a misunderstanding, both Misa and Takuma break the awkward tension between them. Misa expresses that she hopes Takuma would still aid them in the future battles, to which Takuma responded likewise. A package came directly from Asgard. In its contents were meal supplies for the Valkyries, as well as a letter concerning another of Odin's oracles. Upon reading the oracle, Futaba exclaimed that another Akuma or demonic attack would occur tomorrow. How tiring. They'd just been to battle not too long ago. Since Natsuki is one of the strongest and most equipped to fight, Futaba asked for her to fight on the front lines once again. That night, Futaba wanted Natsuki to transform into her battle mode so as to start a demonstration for everyone else. However, as Natsuki kissed Takuma to transform, she soon found that it wasn't working. 
Even as she passionately tried to kiss Takuma, it was still futile as her power lay dormant. After careful assessment, Fataba suspects that Natsuki's unsuccessful transformation was caused by the exhaustion of her AP. Takuma's confusion at the mention of AP is really apparent. Fataba proceeded to explain that AP is the strength that they, as gods and entities of Asgard, use in order to act. The AP is used the entire time they are in action. The recent battle at the festival must have been too heavy and demanding for Natsuki if she ended up exhausting her AP. Since Natsuki was rendered unfit to fight, Futaba requested that Mitsumi and Yukumo focus on increasing their own levels to make up for Natsuki. As soon as morning dawned, Takuma was tasked to help raise the level of both Valkyries before the battle. Yakumo's best shot was to employ a holding hand tactic to increase her level. Yakumo proved to be more difficult to handle than the rest of the Valkyries. Takuma had always been intimidated by Yakumo in the first place. Last night, he even came to the point of asking Natsuki to tell him more about Yakumo. Natsuki unveils that perhaps it was the thumping sound of his heart that made Yakumo less tolerant of him. Natsuki explains that Yakumo was born with an incredible sense of hearing. Takumo's thumping heart probably resonated too loudly for Yakumo's comfort. Or at least that's what Natsuki thinks. As if proving Natsuki's theory, Yakumo had bluntly shut down all of Takumo's attempts during their date. Yakumo truly did find his heartbeat too loud for her hearing. Oh wow, Yakumo really has no chill when making comments. Since Yakumo and Takuma's date had failed, it was time for Mitsumi to try and pull something from her sleeve. Yakumo and Takuma entered Matsumi's trailer and attempted to invoke an intimate moment between the two by having a private photo shoot for 30 minutes. Yakumo, however, had different plans as she made the photo shoot spicier by pulling down Mitsumi's top. Yakumo may be small, but she's the definition of daring. Adding more spice to the shoot, Yakumo brought out an icicle pop that she and Mitsumi licked repeatedly as the shoot went along. Outside the trailer, a gigantic bandaged demon manifested itself and drew its blade in Yamada's direction. Immediately, Futaba and Ichika emerged from the shadows to ward off the demon and protect the civilians. Seeing Ichika and Futaba fight, Mitsumi felt more compelled to transform hurriedly to help her sisters fight. Yakumo wasted no time in getting to the intimate part for her level increase. She pulls Takuma closer and leans in for a kiss. Yakumo is so cool. She acts so nonchalant at all of this. As Ichika and Futaba battled the demon, a fully transformed Mitsumi and Yakumo appeared before them. Seeing this, they left the demon combat solely in the hands of the newly transformed Valkyries. In the deployed barrier, the demon is contained while Mitsumi and Yukumo use their wing and sound duo to subdue him. It still takes them a while, as the demon's power is too overwhelming for the both of them. When Mitsumi flew around trying to evade the demon, she noticed that an arrow was targeted at the demon. A huge explosion followed, and the Valkyries deduced the demon had self-destructed. Wait! Let's not get any hopes up yet. It seems too suspicious for it to die that quick. However, the demon's carcass did not dissipate. Instead, it revived itself and marched with a renewed and unmeasurable strength. Seeing the demon headed to his direction, Takuma stands his ground to fight. With reinvigorated strength, Takuma invoked the power of the Ainanhar within him and summoned the mystical book to heal and rejuvenate the Valkyries. Takuma immediately invoked the holy sword and maximum strength, while Mitsumi delivered the final blow to end the demon. The demon dissipated into ashes, and the battle came to an end. As the sky cleared up, the mysterious boy who saved Garm appears at a rooftop. He seemed to be displeased with the turn of events. What's the chances for him to show up again? He seems to have a crucial role in the story. Regardless, Ikumo and Mitsumi rejoined the others in their normal human form. With a good few bottles of tea and a playful chat, all of them return to their lives post-battle. Misa has tasked Itsuyo, Natsuki, and Takuma to go on a mission of Val love, protecting a Valkyrie from a Groper. This means that all three of them would expose themselves in the vulnerable situation so as to train them on how to act during real-life experience of groping. Futaba, what on earth are you up to now? On the train, Itsuyo freaked out as she forgot about their mission. Momentarily, she prepared her chains to strike whoever dared to lay a hand on her. In a panic, Natsuki revealed herself and reminded Itsuyo of their mission. Takuma, on the other hand, seemed to be taken aback by the amount of people on the train. Even after some time, he still hasn't gotten used to being immersed with crowds. As Natsuki pretended to be the groper in their mission, Itsuyo remarked that Natsuki was too focused on her chest area. This prompted Natsuki to explore other areas of Itsuyo's body. However, it became evident that the entire groping incident had made both girls uncomfortable. Despite minding his own business, Takuma had been pulled over by station cops to apprehend him as a suspicious person. Poor guy, 
He's always being accused just because of his looks. This hindered him from fulfilling his task of saving Itsuyo from Neitsuki. Finally, when Takuma is released, he immediately heads over towards the train to fulfill his role. What he didn't realize was that the exit where Itsuyo and Neitsuki were located was on the other side. Pushing his anxieties away, he dashed towards both girls and saved Itsuyo from the groping Neitsuki, thus completing their mission. In a different part of the city, the mysterious boy who shot arrows and saved Garm made himself appear innocent and childlike to gain the favor of townspeople. The people in the community have called him Takachan, and they harbor nothing but well wishes and genuine concern for the little boy. As Takachan comes back to his residence, he's immediately greeted by a raging Garm. Takachan wasted no time in telling Garm to make haste in the preparations for the coming of their lady. Almost on cue, Skold, the lady they awaited, made her entrance in their residence. Ruskva, Skold's maiden, was quick to punish Garm for not showing proper decorum in greeting their lady. Skold chided Ruskva, telling her that aside from the two imperial orders, there was no need to invest energy and effort in other trivial matters. It's actually exciting to see Skold, Ruska, and Takachan in action. Neitsuki and Takuma made their way home from a long day at school but somehow, Neitsuki feels that an odd aura is within their vicinity. She caught sight of a dark alley and realized that danger lurked in its area. As Neitsuki readied her fighting stance, a dark figure emerged from the darkness and attacked her in swift strikes. Despite her arms being numb, Neitsuki managed to dodge all the attacks. Finally, the dark figure revealed its identity, and it was none other than Ichika, who tried to test Neitsuki's reflexes. Hearing Ichika's voice, Neitsuki felt a sigh of relief exhale from her. Upon arriving at home, Ichika spared no moment in reprimanding Takuma for being a weakling. Ichika may have a point, but really, her words are hurtful. She made it clear that he still wasn't what she was expecting when Odin chose him as their lover. In a fit of rage, Ichika destroyed a few pieces of furniture to channel her anger. Her mood only lightened up when her sisters all gathered together to greet her return. Even though Ichika is portrayed as a feisty Valkyrie, you can tell she holds her family in high regard and with a lot of love. Butaba announced that Ichika's return was for the sole purpose of replacing Natsuki's offensive role as her powers remained dormant. When Ichika and Tamaku were alone together, Ichika didn't praise him or try to engage in love tactics. She maintained her hard and stern demeanor, ultimately calling out Tamaku for not being worthy once more. In any case, what Ichika wanted was for Takuma to at least win her over, instead of her begging for stimulation. She's what modern day people call hard to get. Later on, Ichika and Takuma are joined by Yakumo and Neitsuki in the bath. Both girls join them in the hopes of easing the tension between their lover and their oldest sister. Meanwhile, under the warmth of the Kotatsu, the other Valkyries talked about Ichika's strength and conditions. Even though Ichika possessed superior strength, she's still bound by abnormal conditions, similar to how Yakumo is. The younger Valkyrie sisters ask if it's alright for Ichika and Takuma to wash each other considering Ichika's abnormal condition. Back at the bath, Ichika had been holding back the urge to give in to Takuma's touch. In the end, Ichika's Valkyrie mode is invoked when she and Takuma share a nude kiss in the bath. Ichika seems to be eating her own words now. Who's she calling not worthy again? Since she was unwilling to do any of this, her transformation renders her completely exhausted. In the late night, Takuma showed genuine interest in knowing how powerful Asgardian people could be. Itsuki and Futaba told Takuma that there were more powerful people than the Valkyries in Asgard, some who possessed more Aether than others. In fact, it was this Aether as energy present in all life forms that became the reason as to why malevolent gods were coming to Midgard for more. Unbeknownst to the Valkyries, Skuld and her team were already making their way to infiltrate their home to fulfill the Imperial Orders. There is no rest for the wicked, as they say. As they journey through the sky, they cannot help but wonder why such a treasure like the Misselstein was entrusted to a mere human like Takuma. Without missing a beat, Ichika chimed in their conversation, agreeing that she too did not understand why Odin did that. It was astounding to Ichika how Misa was able to ensnare the enemy from a great distance. Fierce as ever, Ichika confronted the pinpointed scold and her gang as malevolent gods. Ichika gave the gods a warning. If they'd turn back and return to Asgard now, then Ichika would spare them. Girl power! Ichika is the definition of a girl boss. Hearing this, Skuld amused at Ichika's audacity. How dare she challenge them alone? No matter, Skuld would not yield. As the two faced each other, Ichika asked if Skuld was aware of the consequences of disrupting the flow of Yggdrasil, and if so, why would she continue to kill? Enraged at Ichika's question, Skuld interjects that their military might would lead the future of Yggdrasil. To prove her claim of might, Skuld asked Garm and Ruskva to prepare themselves for the fight. But just as they were preparing, Ichika had already taken down both of them. 
leaving Scold with her mouth agape. Don't underestimate Ichika at all. Akachan had been observing Ichika for a while now. He's accepted the fact that he can't easily sneak up on her with her heightened senses. However, that doesn't mean he can't play tricks. This is suspicious. What tricks has he got up his sleeve this time? Skold and Ruskva maintain their position of not yielding to Ichika. Both malevolent gods put up a farce, one that Ichika could easily notice. But it seems like Ichika had overestimated her own power as well. She could feel someone sneaking up from her blind spot, but she didn't anticipate was that the enemy would use a live human as a decoy to block her attack. Seeing Ichika falter, Skold went running to Ruskva, kissing her as she drew near. That was unexpected. Did she also rely on love to activate some hidden form? Upon their lips' contact, multiple demons were summoned at once, and Skold had activated an entirely more ominous form than before. Just as the other Valkyries arrived, Skold chose to take this moment as a way for them to all debut their power. As the wind blew, Skold and her team, the third Norn, dissipated with the air. Back at home, Ichika raged at Takuma for being completely useless once again. Natsuki also admitted that it would be cool if Takuma could get himself together and raise the Valkyrie's level without failing. Later on, the sisters gathered around the Kotatsu to share whatever information they knew about the Norn sisters. After Fataba asked Ichika why they withdrew quickly, Ichika has a short reflection of earlier events, and she wallows in self-pity for failing her sisters. As the night grew later, Takuma was met with a drunk Natsuki. The drunken maiden had totally lost full control over herself. When Takuma motioned to tuck Natsuki into bed, her drunken state began to take off her own clothes and has to be felt by Takuma. Not wanting to wait any longer, Natsuki takes matters into her own hands and initiates intimate interactions between her and him. No! Natsuki, you'll regret all this when you sober up. When she finally regained her sense of self, Natsuki apologized for being a nuisance. While the Valkyries recuperated in their home, in another part of the city, the Norms summoned a great number of demons once more and prepared to release them into a rampage on the city. You are weak. These are the words that ring in Fataba's ears, as Odin had once said this to her in her early childhood. But right now, Fataba held her own, protected her sisters, and performed castle techniques that summoned the walls of Valhalla itself. How is that in any way weak? Against the Norn and her lover, Roskva, the Valkyries would have stood a chance. But because of the horde of the demons they summoned, it proved to be challenging to even come close to them. No matter what strategy to avoid killing would put them at a disadvantage. For starters, the only effective strategy the sisters have come up with is to annihilate Ruskva and leave the Norn powerless without her lover. Killing her lover would totally put the Norn in grief, and at a loss, composure. As if on cue, Takuma entered the room and interjected that he was ready to fight. However, he recommended that the only way to execute the plan is if he himself would attack the enemy. His sudden change of resolve baffled Ichika, but she did not discourage him. The battle between the Valkyries and the Norn is sure to be a hostile one. To gear up, Futaba talks Takuma into performing a Val love to increase her level. Together, both Futaba and Takuma engaged in nude embraces and passionate kissing. Their bathroom moment is intensely passionate with the way Takuma grips her. While Fataba holds her own against the demons and the Norn, Ichika and Takuma sneak onto the battleground. Ichika remarked that Futaba is easily the weakest among all sisters with how little aether she possesses. Hearing this, Takuma cannot grasp whether or not Ichika was telling the truth. It always looked up to Futaba for being strong. Back at the storehouse in the backyard, Natsuki worried for her older sister, Shino. Although Shino is as frail, if not worse, than Futaba, she still pushed herself to push through with maintaining barrier techniques during battles. For Shino, if she was not able-bodied to fight, then at least in her own way she'd be able to contribute to the success of their missions. On the battleground, Takuma and Ichika track down the number of demon eggs left in enemy possession. Over and over, Skold and Ruskva let their demons take down Futaba's attacks. Despite exhaustion, Futaba managed to release provocative words at Skold to draw her attention. As Skold enraged at Futaba, Ichika, in her full battle Valkyrie mode, lunged at destroying the four demon eggs. Finally! An attack to cripple the opposition, or so we all thought. Realizing that there really was one more hidden egg, Takuma launched himself into the air and shielded Ichika from Ruskva. In an unpredictable and desperate turn of events, Ruskva had allowed a demon egg to hatch inside of her merging both demigod and demon blood into one. Ruskva's power was not immense and unmatched. 
To be on par with their strengths, the only way was for Takuma to increase Ichika's level to its highest potential. Without disagreeing, Ichika allowed Takuma to seduce her and bring out her strongest form. An intimate moment between Ichika and Takuma was shared as they concealed themselves from the enemy. Takuma sure has improved a lot in pleasing the ladies. The way he grapples on and makes Ichika shiver under his touch? is just spicy. A bright light exploded itself and illuminated the night sky. It was a power strong enough for the Norn to tremble. From its wake emerged Ichika's spear. What they didn't realize was that Takuma had also awakened his own higher form. Together, they battle the Norn for the Valkyries tomorrow. Multiple attacks to the barrier have led Shino to exert more effort in maintaining it for everyone's protection. However, Natsuki cannot allow herself to stand idly by anymore as her sisters risk their lives on the battlefield. We love a determined woman. Natsuki made her way to Takuma, ultimately activating her Valkyrie form through a shared kiss and the red string of fate connecting both of them. A fully geared Natsuki joined Ichika and Fatuba along with a fully realized and powered Takuma. Blades, castles, and spears all together attack in a beautiful cacophony of destruction towards the opposition. Seeing them attack all together makes me wish perhaps it's not that far off that they'll also activate their forms all at once? That must be a sight to see. Feeling the three Valkyries' strength overwhelm them, the Norn and Ruskva use their ultimate power trump of assured destruction, the Galdir and Rune fusion. Ruskva summoned the power of Hagar, an enigmatic demonic power capable of taking down all Valkyrie techniques before them. As Hagar unleashed, both the barrier and castle crumbled, leaving Shino and Futaba most hit by its effects. Oh no, Shino directly took the hit, her sides now eroding from the demonic power. Before a finishing blow is dealt, an anomaly from the malevolent side is felt as well. Unexpectedly, their own tactics had affected themselves as well. The fusion of the demon, Ruskva, and Skuld into one entity had backfired due to an immense genuine love for Skuld's well-being. As Skuld and Ruskva fell to the ground, Ichika confronted them, prepared for a kill. However, Skuld had managed to formulate an escape for both of them. Meanwhile, Takachan and Garm prepared to escape as well after acquiring Misselstein from a bounded Misa. Before both leave, Garm impaled Misa's torso, leaving her to bleed all over. Seeing the enemy scatter, Misa, although in her weakest state, manages to reunite with her sisters in the cocoon of thread. After the battle, all Valkyries gathered around Misa, who refused to wake. Takuma, in his higher form, summoned a ritual that led him to Nilfheim, a realm ruled by Hell. Despite the setbacks, Takuma fought his hardest to retrieve Misa's soul from the eternal cold realm and brought it back to her as she gained life once more in Midgard. As Misa awoke, the Valkyries rejoiced once more. From then on, the Valkyries continued to lead their individual lives while maintaining a collective goal. The love they craved in the beginning was merely that of a means to increase power. But now, the love they all shared for each other and the love Takuma all had for each of them greatly surpasses any kind of love that they could ever wish for. And that's the end of our anime recap, guys. If you like this video, make sure you press that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.